What do you know about gentrification? Who? Gentrification. Before it was suck ass. There was no culture. There was it was just South Beach. Little by little, shit started happening. I mean, I was expecting to be like one block long and just a few buildings and some graffiti, and I'm finding every block is a, is like an adventure. I like to say that I took chicken shit and made chicken salad in this neighborhood. overbuilt downtown Miami, where the hype of the real estate market imploded in a stunning fashion, the old browbeaten warehouse district called Wynwood is now an up-and-coming hip neighborhood on the road to progress. Like New York's Soho neighborhood, artists here are turning ugly into trendy. Thanks to the Goldman family, that they had that vision. Things started happening. Tony was just this really incredible visionary in terms of mixing a blend of real estate development, hospitality operations, food and beverage, etc. Goldman is a professional neighborhood gentrifier. He makes an art of knowing how to buy in bulk properties and neighborhoods that have all the potential to become the latest hip cultural zone of the city. He did it in New York and Philadelphia. He was involved in South Beach. In the, in the 1960s, this, this French philosopher named Henry Lefebvre writes this really great book, and it was called The Survival of Capitalism. And he says that capitalism to survive needs a space. This other famous geographer called David, named David Harvey picks up on that. And he meant that in two ways, right? So one, capitalism needs new parts of the planet to exploit, to make money. But there's another spatial aspect to capitalism expansion right here at home. It needs to reinvent a space, give what we call added value to a space. And it does that through cultural means of production. Right, through infusing that space with a new cultural meaning and a new cultural interpretation. So in Wynwood, the way that takes place and catches fire and draws all of our attention is the graffiti murals flying all over the place through the neighborhood. Right? And so one of the great movements of graffiti muraling is aptly called primary flight. I don't actually know why they called it primary flight, but it gave flight to the neighborhood. It put the neighborhood on the global map. The first time I did a, a, a big wall in Wynwood, it was through primary flight and it had nothing to do with any sort of real estate development or anything like that. And I think that cynical people might think that the Goldmans, um, you know, want to bring art here because they own property and it's going to raise the value. Um, I don't really care about that because I just want a platform for art and I want to see more art. I'm happy about that. We have access to a bunch of artists who are willing to put their art in the streets, especially in Wynwood, to be seen and hopefully profit further and benefit further in their art careers. And some people who are a hell of a lot more rich than we are figured that that was a pretty fucking good idea. We didn't have any idea that's what they were gonna do, but you know, it was our idea first. Miami's great outdoor museum, the Wynwood Arts, the Wynwood Outdoor Street Art Museum, which is a, a museum for all of Wynwood where you, you get an application and you can go from one to, one to the other. I met uh, David Lombardi in about 2005. I was uh, taking a picture uh, during the daytime of one of the murals I had just finished. He told me he had uh, a couple other walls that if I wanted to paint murals on, that he'd give to me. After decades of disinvestment, Wynwood is one of the cheapest places to buy land, has one of the lowest rents for large studio spaces anywhere in the city and the county, probably. They 
David saw an opportunity in this area and started purchasing heavily, not really knowing how the neighborhood was gonna turn out. So I remember the first time I came here was with a friend of mine, and we're standing in this warehouse, and he goes, what do you think? And I said, well, I don't know what to think. He goes, well, I think I'm buying it. I said, why? It's because it's too cheap, and I'll figure out what to do with it later. He came to the opening and saw all the people that I had at the gallery. Here it was 10 o'clock at night in the neighborhood and there were all these people here. It blew my mind, 100 young people like you, standing in this warehouse looking at art, drinking wine, and I said, I love this. I think you get the most bang for your buck when you involve culture and arts in change. <laughs> In studying Wynwood, one of the things I came across was these repeated references to Wynwood as the Soho of Miami. The history of gentrification in Soho seemed radically different from what happened in Wynwood. And the key difference, I think, being that in Soho, not only did gentrification take many, many decades longer to develop, but it was really led by artists. I don't know if like the artists are really setting the trend. I kind of feel like there's always somebody first. Like there's always some real estate developer that's like, hey, I got great cheap rent. Why don't you come over here and open your church or your barber shop? The best way for us to like get shit in motion is probably to put some warm bodies in there. Let's put some artists in there. Let's put some musicians in there. Let's, let's just put some shit in there and see what happens. There's nothing in my mind that I've heard about the Wynwood Arts District that tells me that they know anything about an arts district, that they know anything about art. If I wanted to develop an arts district, I'd look at Berlin and see what happened there. Look at, you know, uh, Chelsea, or I, I don't know, I mean, it, it doesn't, it seems to me that there isn't anybody speaking to any of that. Nuestro público en los últimos siete o ocho meses ha sido gente que definitivamente no está interesada en lo que está colgado en las paredes, sino lo que están sirviendo en una mesa. A medida que eso fue cambiando, nosotros fuimos perdiendo cierto encanto con el Gallery Book. A la final decidimos no abrirlo. Fue el sentimiento más agridulce que tenido. If the artists get priced out in places where the gentrification is actually artist-led, with like artist cooperatives and artists own property and all that kind of stuff, imagine what happens when it's not artist-led. You know? El Yasser Studio. No, el Venezuela. Sí, el, el, de hecho me acuerdo hace como seis meses que tuvimos una conversación en Woods y yo creía que el, el curso que estaba cogiendo Wynwood iba a terminar deshaciéndose de nosotros. Y él dijo que no, que estaba loco, que, que aquí todo el mundo estaba trabajando para el mundo en pro del arte. Eso. Bueno, estos días leí la noticia de que ya se fue. Tony Goldman made this or helped turn this into the Winwood Cafe and Arts District, which allows us to have restaurant bar, restaurant bar, 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 up and down the streets, and it really have more of like a South Beach Coconut Grove feel.
This is Wynwood, the area. Wynwood. Oh. Yeah. Where like the artists are and the hipsters are. Kind of hipsters, more trendy people. Now it's cool. Well, Kanye was walking around here the other day. I feel safe now, even though it's still all fucked up. Let's just go over there anyways. Then they raise the rent and they kick the artists out and they move a bunch of fucking, you know, rich fools in and, and then eventually they kick out the, the neighborhood and it's awesome. I think it's fucking great, man. If you have two options, really, of, of economic growth or economic failure, I think most people would prefer economic growth. One of the great myths perpetuated by policy discussions of neighborhood revitalization, urban revitalization, is that you have a binary choice between economic growth or economic decline. Moving forward or staying stuck in the ghetto, crime-ridden poverty that the inner city was stigmatized to be in the 1980s and 90s. And it's clearly a false choice, right? It means giving control of the neighborhood to people that have the capital and power to invest in it, or leaving the neighborhood to the people who have been sticking it out for the last decades in which everybody else decided to disinvest from it. And of course, many, many social scientists who observe this false choice ask, why can't the gains of some of this new investment just be shared in a way that actually benefits the people that live there? The local residents have embraced this. They're out on gallery nights. I know a lot of them. El barrio se ha dañado. No es como antes, que uno podía hacer el ir para aquí, para allá. Había muchos lugares para divertirse y todo ese lío ya. Ahora hay todo galería, galería, galería. Y en la galería hay que tener mucho billete. They are energized by what this has done to their neighbor. Y buscar un policía para que me llame la grúa para poder mover el carro para poder entrar yo. Yo vine aquí en 1964. Soy un pionero de aquí, del barrio de Wimbo. Yo trabajo con una compañía de seguridad. Pues me mandaron a una galera. Me dicen, bueno, la, usted está aquí para recibir las personas abrir las puertas, dar las buenas noches y mirar que la gente del barrio no entre. Pero como yo reconozco, las personas del barrio entre esta gente, si esta gente se ve más mugrosa que las personas del barrio. Por eso que te digo, no nos quieren. A nosotros en la galería no nos quieren. Esa gente ha llegado y está bien el progreso, pero tampoco que nos echen tan bajo porque nosotros somos ciudadanos. Y, y tenemos los mismos derechos que tienen ellos. One of the reasons why Wynwood is so popular is precisely because of its edginess. It's a place of contact between different kinds of people. How desperate! Now, since they, I want to put you on film. Can you twerk it? Can you twerk it? I can, I can see twerk, you twerk it. it. If that's one of the characteristics that we want to preserve about urbanism, the ability of different kinds of people from all walks of life to have contact with each other, then we're going to have to set something in place for when cities are revitalized and redeveloped, that some of the people that were living there at that point of revitalization have the ability to stay. It's a birthday! I had a building on 29th Street. There were drug dealers, there were prostitutes. I bought it because it was, a, it was part of an assemblage of what I needed to buy. I decided I'm going to tear this building down because it's cheaper 
to have it as a, a lot than it was to continue the way I was going. I walked in the building one day and told the tenants, I'm tearing this building down and you're all gonna have to get out. And they said, fuck you, you're not tearing the building down. You're full of shit, uh, they're all stoned. And the next day, I delivered a backhoe in front of the building. That's a big machine that rips a building down. So I parked it there as an omen for them. And within a week, I had the permit. And the morning I got the permit, Chrissy had the neighborhood policeman come, knock on every door, and told them they have one hour to get out, because the building was being condemned and torn down. And they all stood on the sidewalk with their belongings and their suitcases, looking like, he did it. <laughs> and I went by, and of course I gloated, and wished them all well on their future endeavors. You have to set aside things so that all the different kinds of people that live in a city can stay in a city. Otherwise, you just invert the class structure of our metropolitan regions where the wealthy were living on the outside and the poor on the inside. We just flip the script and you end up with the rich living on the inside and the poor living on the outside. Well, in that case, you haven't changed a thing about the way that we live. So that means that some of the profits, some of the gains from commerce, right, from reinvestment in the city, when people exploit that rent gap that's been created over so many different decades, some of those gains have to be set aside. And not just in a charitable way of employing five or 10 or 15 or 20 people to do the cleaning up of the neighborhood that's part of the gentrification process. But you have to set aside land, you have to set aside affordable housing, you have to set aside transit infrastructure. fight all you want, we can try to understand it all you want, but we're always gonna shit and breathe and fuck and try to kill each other. That's what we do. And all we are doing as artists is trying to fucking make sure there's a record of it. I don't know, like there's just so many things in life that they're completely out of your control. The fact that they're kicking all these people out, yeah, it's happening, it sucks, but well, what are you gonna do? Go work. What am I gonna sit in a corner and cry? Oh, they keep me out. No, bro. Unfortunately, there's no simple prescription for the way to make sure that urban redevelopment works for everybody involved, especially the residents that have lived in neighborhoods for decades before the reinvestment of art-centric gentrification came along. There has to be a process for all the different people that have a stake in this neighborhood, in Wynwood or wherever it might be, to talk to each other to negotiate with each other. And they have to come into that political process to sit at the negotiating table with an equal share of the resources that it takes to reach whatever conclusion they're gonna reach, right? The messiness of politics. And what we've seen in Wynwood was a complete circumvention of politics, right? Politics that was totally manipulated by money. Tú verás que poco a poco nos eliminan, nos sacan del barrio. Tú vas a verlo. ¿Cómo te sientes, Soria? Cansada, imagínate. Ya se siente como que no es el barrio. Ya lo que quiero es irme ya, con este lío que tenemos arriba.
What is that? Gentrification. Sold up, pushed out. Trash soldier, palladial window through invention into families and cultures forgotten, cultures disrespected. In the service of the dollar, the neighbors of music television become soundless, stifled and sold out. Gather the strongholds, invent another shop, and topple the tar. You know, you're a question, I gotta get into this business, right?